Mufti, much love from Australia. I would love to know if you can give insight into the validity of muta from the Sunni point of view today. I don't know if I could really go into that today, but I will briefly say I have got, um, I believe, some videos on it on YouTube. If you watch them, um, there there has been research done. Um, there's a very good book by a contemporary Maliki Sunni uh, scholar of, from Morocco. Um, uh, Sheikh Ibn Doctor or Ustad Ibn uh, Ibn Al Azraq Al Anjuri, and it's called Muta Kiraatun Jadida Fil Fikr Sunni, and it's an amazing book, a very detailed study, and he he has some lectures on YouTube which you can watch as well. They are in Arabic. He has one debate with a Salafi scholar as well, Sheikh um, Fizazi, and it's it's definitely although the debate is kind of okay because as debates go they're not often healthy but it's still a good overview so he is showing from sunni thought that muta is actually not haram and that has been the opinion of certain other scholars in the past including um the great maliki legend of the 20th century ibn ashur one of my indirect teachers uh, through Sheikh Sidi Bukhubza. And so that's also his opinion that it's not, it's based on need and not something that is categorically haram. Um, and it was also the opinion of Ibn Taymiyyah's granddad, Majduddin Ibn Taymiyyah. And it has been the opinion of several Sunni authorities in very early Islam beginning with the companions of the Prophet وسلم, like Ibn Abbas, and some people challenge whether it was Ibn Abbas, whether Ibn Abbas left the view or not. Uh, but it was the view of other Imran Ibn Hussein an, and, and a few other companions and then some of the Tabi'i and Tabi'in. But then it becomes a political issue. Um, some people had claimed it was Imam Malik's view. Hence the Hanafiya continue to, in all their books, write that it was Imam Malik's view up until even in the Hidayah they say um, you know Al-Mut'a is haram khilafan li Malik um, and it's always I've always been intrigued what made them like they must have been you know like people say oh they just didn't know the method of Imam Malik I find that a, a hard sell you know because I feel that there must have been certain voices that had reached them that were Maliki, that must have echoed that for them to believe it. It could, I mean, they say, you know, it's it could just be ignorance. It could be, but I, mm, I don't know. I find it much more than that because I can see this, um, this discussion in the background. So that's where it is. I hope that's a bit of an, and people, so today the majority of, Muslims, sorry, Sunni Muslims, majority of Sunni Muslims consider it haram. And there's a minority that consider it uh, not haram. And I would say, look, it's one of those things that if you follow those ulama that say it's haram, then it's haram. If you don't, you don't. I don't think this is not something to fight over. This is not something to... And, the, the, and there's no need to be... So, you know, people, one of the things is people get very um, emotional with their arguments. Like they will say, well, if it's halal, w w would you let your mother do it? <laughs> I mean, this is an absurd. Um, and it's an argument from the heights of insecurity. Not everything that is in Islam is about your mother or your sister or your father. Don't make it about you. It's about Islam and it's about what the scholars of Islam may disagree, like Sheikh um, Ibn Ashur. His tafsir on the Quran is in 30 volumes. He was deemed the Sheikh al-Islam of the 20th century. I mean, he's not a small figure. He's somebody loved by everyone, even the Salafis or the... You, you can't name a sect except or a denomination except they have to respect him. 
I mean, and, and that's rare in Islam that you get scholars that everybody kind of still admires. It's, it's, I'm telling you, it's very rare, especially in recent times. So you could get great scholars. So, but one denomination will hail him and another one will say, oh no, he was a jahil. So you could, and some people will say he was this, you know, this person was that. And so not every, so you could take that, to, you could take the world today, pick a scholar and somebody will call him a jahil and somebody will call him Sheikh al-Islam. But he is one of those figures that everybody, for the most part, they respect, regardless of them not agreeing with him. Like he has this position of, oh, it's a bit like Shawli Allah Dahlawi, you know, from the Indian subcontinent. It doesn't matter if you're Brailvi, Diobandi, Ahle Hadith or whatever. Everybody rates Shawli Allah Dahlawi. You know, it's like... Uh, how, how did that happen? But it, it did. So you get that sometimes. You get people who everybody just has this respect for, even if they don't agree with them. So he is like that, and he's a huge figure. You know, it's not just a... So, and I'm not saying... People could say, look, he and maybe he got it wrong, and that's fine. You don't have to believe it. It's not your view. This is a view, and you have the other view. So if you subscribe to the view that it's something is haram, then you should not be doing that because you believe it's haram. Okay. And people say, well, you know, by saying, by showing ikhtilaf, you could lead people astray. But ikhtilaf in Islam is a mercy. The schools of fiqh all disagree. You know, what do you want to do? Throw away the madhabs of Islam? Even on this. So, for example, even on muta'aqadim and Zufar from the Hanafi Madhab, what was his opinion? You know, one could argue it's still very similar. What about the ruling in Islam that you could marry a woman uh, by deceiving her? That you're not, that you just in your mind are thinking this is a temporary thing, but you're not telling her. So once you've married her and after the weekend or after whatever, you decide to just say talaq. The, the madhabs, the Sunni schools, for the most part, consider that halal. And to me, that would be haram. And to other ulama, that would be haram. Because you're deceiving. You're conning a person. And you're, you, and you're obviously shattering their trust and faith. So that ought to be, that is zulm. But yet, Ibn Abd al-Bar, Imam Nawawi, all these people write on it. They say there's nothing wrong. That's halal. It's not. They'll say that. You know, they may they may say, mm, you know, it's not. We don't like it. Some of them might say, okay, we don't like it, but it's not haram. They'll make it clear that it's not haram. Ibn Abdul Bar has a whole section on it. So this thing, which today people may call nikah al misyar, or some people call it whatever, but this or the classical word for it is in nikah bin niyat al talaq. This is in the classical fit books, if you want to search it. You see, so Sunni Islam is made up of loads of different schools of thought. You have the Hanbalis, the Shafi'is, the Malikis, the Hanafis, and each of these schools has sub-schools. So to say that, oh, we, sh you know, we don't want differences in Islam, you don't know Islam, unfortunately, because Islam yeah, celebrates I mean, it's a beautiful diversity. It's a strength of Islam that people within it have so many opinions. And